Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh and today we are sitting in a car that, oh my gosh, so many of you wanted me to get my hands on, to get behind the wheel of, to do a video on. We are sitting, as we speak, in a 2023, so brand new generation RX 350H. So this is the brand new RX hybrid, new interior, new technology, new engine under the hood, everything is new. And so many of you wanted me to drive this car because if you've been with me here on the channel, you know that most of my videos videos have been about our 2023 NX hybrid that we own for about six or seven months. We just traded it in. We actually have this car today because my new car that I love to pieces, I'm so excited about and so happy with is back at the dealer getting a few accessories and ceramic tint put on the windows. And so while they're doing all of that, we have for the day this absolutely beautiful 2023 RX 350H as a loaner. So what I wanted to do today is take this car for a quick spin, give you my first impressions and just kind of quick thoughts about everything going on in here. We have an entirely new interior and for the very first time, a lot is shared between this RX hybrid and the NX hybrid that we just traded in. The technology is the same between the infotainment system, the drive setup, a lot of the technology here behind the wheel. And most importantly, and this is the thing I've complained a lot about with both my NX and a lot of new Lexuses out there, we now have, instead of the venerable three and a half liter V6 in both the non-hybrid and hybrid RXs, now we have a two and a half liter four cylinder hybrid engine in this RX. And a lot of you have asked me to do this video because you wanted to know if some of the things that I've complained about with my NX carry through to the new RX because they are so similar. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Now, the very first thing I'm going to tell you about this RX is I just sit here in the driveway. We will take it out for a drive in a minute. But the very first thing I will say about this NX or this RX in uh, comparison to my NX is it is definitely a more premium experience in here than it is in the NX. And that is something that I complained about a lot <laughs> with the NX because I felt like the NX was kind of a RAV4 with makeup on it. I felt like they could have gone further with the NX to make it more of a true premium car. In a lot of ways, the NX does very much feel like a Toyota Venza, a Toyota RAV4. The materials are better than those other cars in the NX, but I didn't feel like Lexus pushed it as far as they could have gone. The RX, on the other hand, is definitely more premium. The design of the interior has more shapes and more sculpting and more stitching, especially along the door pockets. And then we've got kind of this what I call the bathtub <laughs> ledge kind of thing that goes on around the dashboard here and kind of wraps around the driver and the cockpit down here. The materials are better for sure in the RX. Now, they're not the way that the old RX used to be, however. So we do find very similar, the new style Nulux, which does feel a lot more like vinyl than what's, for example, in the uh, RX I drove a few weeks ago, and is also in our brand new car. That brand new car does have Nulux, but it feels a heck of a lot better than what's in the new Lexuses. The other thing that I don't care for in this new RX that I was frankly shocked when I got into this car this morning and started to, you know, feel it out is we have some plastic wood, which is the very first time I've ever seen that on a Lexus. Um, here in the center console, I'll put some close-up footage in the video. We have what I believe to be plastic wood here on the center console. So we've got kind of a push open uh, compartment here right up in front of the gear shifter and the cover on it here, I believe is plastic wood. It feels exactly like what you get in any other Toyota out there, which is again, another thing I've complained about. A lot of these new Lexuses are starting to feel like very nice Toyotas and not truly Lexuses. We also have that plastic wood on the strip that goes across the passenger seat in front of uh, next to the air vent that I believe is also plastic wood. The wood on the steering wheel, however, does feel like it is real wood. And it's very similar, if you've ever seen a Lexus with the matte bamboo finish inside, feels very similar to that as well. So the steering wheel as a whole, the wood on the steering wheel does feel nice. The thing I'm not personally crazy about is that we've lost that full wood upper on the wheel that we used to get on older Lexuses and is again in our new car. 
was one of the big things I wanted in that new car. Now the reason that they've gone from that to this kind of like quarter strip of wood on the new cars is because these do have a full heated steering wheel all the way around where the older cars with the wooden upper and then the wood on the bottom section, the heating was only at essentially between like two and four and then maybe eight and 10. So you didn't get that much heating on the wheel with the older ones. You do on this one and that is, to me, it's a worthy trade-off if you are in a climate where you need to have heating year round. Technology wise in this RX, it is essentially identical to the new NX and to the new RZ in any new car with this infotainment system. It works beautifully and I really, really do like it. The difference between this particular RX and my NX that if you've seen any of my other videos is we actually don't have the head up display. And I'm glad that I got to, I'm getting to drive this car without a head up display because we have traditional buttons here on the steering wheel instead of the touch pads. I don't particularly care really for either one of them. I think I could be happy with either. And finally, because we don't have a head up display in this car, we have what is essentially a flat, cheap, black plastic cover where the head-up display module would be. It, it feels thin, it feels flimsy, it just, I wish they had made a separate dash cover for the vehicles that don't get a head-up display because having this, again, this cheapy plastic cover, pretty bad. But the big thing that I think a lot of you wanted to know about this new RX is how it drives and how I feel about an RX having the two and a half liter four cylinder engine instead of the three and a half liter V6 under the hood. So let's go ahead, get buckled in and let's hit the road. All right, guys, well, here we are underway in the new RX Hybrid. And as you probably just heard, the two and a half liter four cylinder engine that's new for this generation does make a pretty big difference in terms of the overall driving nature and characteristic of this new RX Hybrid. If you have watched any of my other videos where I've driven my NX, or if you watched the video where I drove the 2022 RX, that had the three and a half liter 2GR V6 engine. It is a substantially different experience in this new RX than it ever has been in an RX before. Because up until last year for 2022, we still had the 2GR V6 with the hybrid system for the RX hybrid. For this generation, Toyota has downsized the engine to, again, this smaller two and a half liter four cylinder, and the difference is pretty profound. If you were to trade in, for example, a 2022 RX, uh, whether it's the gas or the hybrid version, and then you were to get into a 23 RX, whether it be the hybrid or the turbo, you're gonna notice a difference in terms of the engine noise. And I need to get up to speed here, so I'm gonna shut up, let you hear it again here. That is definitely not a V6 engine under the hood. And this is the big thing I've, the big complaint I've had about a lot of Lexuses recently, and a lot of Toyotas for that matter as well, the Highlander, for example, which is the sister ship to this RX. When you downgrade from that three and a half liter, beautiful three and a half liter uh, V6 engine, you end up with a lot more of this kind of groany, droney, unrefined and rough four cylinder noise because these four cylinders are having to work a lot harder than a V6 would to move these cars. I really feel like Toyota and Lexus's decision to move the their larger cars, both the mid-size cars like this and the larger so-called mid-size cars like the Grand Highlander and the new Lexus TX, two four cylinders was not the best decision because it really does take away a lot of that kind of smooth and creamy and refined and just quiet nature that the Highlander and the RX, but really especially the RX had in the past. The other thing I'm noticing with this RX versus the 2022 that I drove just about a month ago is while this RX is more refined than the new NX, the current 2023 and 24 NX, it has lost some of that refinement in terms of 
the quietness and the NVH and how much comes through the wheel and through the pedals for this generation. I was kind of surprised by how loud and how there's a lot that comes in through the cabin in this car that you didn't used to get from an RX. So where I'm taking us now is down to the same expressway that I take in all my other videos. So hopefully I'll be able to get us uh, some runway out on the on-ramp there. And the reason I take you down there in these videos is because that allows me to open up the these cars full throttle. And the point of that being so that you can hear the engine at full rev, at full tip. So that's where we're heading now. The on-ramp is just up there. I'm gonna try to give anyone who's in front of me some runway so that I can open it up again full throttle and we'll be able to hear this engine it sounds exactly like it does in the NX which is it's just kind of a shame that we've lost that beautiful V6 sound and feeling that we used to get in these cars so there's actually a really beautiful old a uh, couple generations of old LS in front of me I'm going to give him some leeway there and no one is immediately behind me so he's got enough room all right, let's go ahead and open this up full throttle. So again, as you could hear, gone are the days of the V6. This is no longer that creamy, smooth, refined power plant. And the other thing, too, with that engine being downsized, it's not just the noise that it creates, but accelerating on that on-ramp. Okay, so I probably started at about 15 miles per hour and then got up to maybe 75, which is a speed limit for this road here. I had to be foot on the floor that whole time to get us up to speed. And that's more that's a lot more work than I would have to do in the previous generation with the three and a half liter V6. This car is definitely down on power as compared to the last uh, RX hybrid. And it's a shame because that RX, the last RX used to be such a great highway cruiser. And this one is as well. It's just not, it doesn't have the passing power that the last RX Hybrid had. And again, just there's there seems to be less isolation from the road in here now. So you can really hear the expansion joints that we're passing over. You can feel a little bit more coming through the car as well. Now I will say some of this might be attributed to what I'm assuming are the factory of tires on this car, which are of course run flats uh, as are on any Lexus Hybrid. So that's probably giving us a little bit more noise and a little bit more of a firmer ride. I'm sure some of this would go away if you change the tires out. But even so, this engine note that we're getting here, I don't like it. This car to me really does feel like a Highlander. It feels like a Toyota. If you were to put the Toyota badge here on the steering wheel, I would not, I would think I was in a Toyota. Which is not a bad thing because Toyotas are great cars, even the new ones, and you know, Toyotas will run forever with very minimal maintenance and very minimal cost. But you know, we're, we've gotten to a point with Lexus where I feel like we're paying so much for the car. Like this particular spec is about, is, is very high 50s or low 60s that I feel like we, deserve a little bit more than what we're getting especially in the new I've said this with the NX it's true of the RX here as well I can say that fairly confidently today having driven this car now again for a while there's really a lot coming into this cabin and it's surprising to me how much is because again you can go watch the video I, I did just about a month ago on the 2022 RX, I gushed over that car at how nicely it drove and how refined and serene and just kind of old school Lexus that car was. This RX has definitely lost a lot of that.
It's just that engine note that I cannot, does not belong in this car. It is acceptable, I will say, in an NX, but it shouldn't be here in an RX. And on that note, by the way, I wanna to touch on this really quickly. A lot of you have said, no, you're stupid, that's not the engine, that's the CVT droning away and blah, 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 blah. And here's the thing to know about these uh, eCVTs, as Toyota calls them, in their cars. This is not a CVT, like a belt and pulley CVT like you would get in a Nissan or in a Hyundai or you know, in a Honda Civic, for example, or even a Toyota Corolla. This is a single speed, planetary style reduction gear set. So it is more similar to the transmission or gearbox that you would get in an EV than it is to a true CVT. The reason that Toyota calls this an eCVT is because this car and this transmission can continuously variate the gearing ratios that this car is going through to continuously and always keep it in the most efficient you know gearing ratio possible what that means is because it's continuously pretty much doing this to the power band the engine is can it that's what you're hearing is that engine revving and just kind of modulating itself to stay in the most efficient power band possible so for example as you kind of hear that that kind of you know vacuum cleaner like sound that kind of sound that's not the CVT that's the engine it's just not revving itself with step revs the way it would in a traditional automatic so the way that an automatic true true cogged automatic kind of goes that's it going through its gears this car doesn't have gears so it doesn't do that all right, so here we are again. I just got off the expressway and we're on some really nice pavement. And here, again, perfectly fine, perfectly smooth. Really nicely refined. There is still more wind noise here and I'm only doing about 40 miles an hour or was back there. There was still more wind noise than I would have expected or would like in an RX. But all things considered, it's not terrible. It's just this engine note. If you can get over this, you'll love this car. I feel like I'm shitting on this car kind of unfairly, but <laughs> just because I, I have loved Lexus cars for so long, have driven Toyota and Lexus cars for so long, it's just a little bit disappointing to me that they've gone this way with the RX. And personally, if I were shopping for something like this, you know, I would, I might still buy the RX just because it is such a reliable, comfortable, easy to drive car. Everything that I love about my NX and have talked to you about about the NX that it's easy to drive. It's a one figure driving experience. It's the perfect daily driver kind of commuter car is absolutely true of this RX2. As long as you can get over that teeny tiny four cylinder that makes a ton of noise under the hood in this car all the time. I love the hybrid sounds that these cars make too. This one, these they're louder in here for some for whatever reason. Should we do one last acceleration sound test here? I'm uh, sitting at a red light, waiting to turn right, and uh, I'm gonna have to gas it kind of hard to get out into traffic there. So, let's do one last one. Here we go. I just had to do that. Just had to. All right, guys, here we are back home now. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video with some final thoughts. This is a great car for some people. If you're the kind of person who just buys RX after RX after RX after RX, and you don't particularly care or are interested in things like engine noise and the way that cars drive and 
having the absolute nicest materials in the cabin and you can live with the plasta wood and some of the other kind of lower end features and qualities that this car now has i think you will absolutely love it and i don't say that as a backhanded compliment to this car because objectively even despite all the things that i've complained about with this car the engine and the you know the the lower grade materials lexus and toyota products will last you for 20 years and 200,000 miles if you maintain them. They are great cars. And at the end of that 20 years, you'll still be able to sell them for an incredible amount of money relative to their peers in the marketplace. However, if you're like me and you have had a number of Toyotas over the years, and the reason you bought Toyotas and Lexuses especially was for the utmost in refinement and quiet driving and the nicest leather and beautiful wood and, you know, fully polished, beautifully polished steering wheels and all that kind of thing, you might be a little bit disappointed with this new RX the same way that I was with the new NX. And this is not the kind of car, if you are somebody like me and care about these kinds of things, this is not the kind of car that you want to go into sight unseen without a test drive. You really, really need to test drive, especially this new hybrid powertrain, if you are coming from something like an RX 450H from any of the previous generations. Because this is probably the biggest change that the RX has ever gone through in terms of its lineage and in terms of its life cycle. They have made more changes to the powertrain, to the interior materials, to the technology in this car than we have ever seen in an RX generation before. And it is not, in my opinion, the same RX that we have come to know and love, especially again for us Toyota lovers and those of us who have had those beautiful 2GR V6 engines. So still, overall, a great car it will be a great investment, will last you for 20 years and 200,000 miles. You just have to be aware of what it is you're buying and figure out if this is going to be right for you. Would I personally buy this with my own money? Absolutely not, because what I want is what we just bought. Old school Lexus, big displacement engine, many cylinders in that engine, quiet, smooth, and refined driving. And I will be doing, by the way, um, a full intro video on that. This just happened to happen. <laughs> so I thought I couldn't pass up the opportunity to do this video and show you guys this car because so many of you have been asking for so long. So I hope this is what you guys, all of you who had asked for an RX video were looking for. It really is a great car. It's just not going to be for everyone. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I will talk to you again real soon in that uh, reveal video for the new car. Full intro on everything to do with it. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. I will talk to you all soon. Have a great one and take care.